So it's the 1800s and you're not feeling so great. You've been doing a lot of hard labor for very little money and your body is aching. But then you see a crowd of people all gathered around listening to a man named Clark Stanley, or as he called himself, the Rattlesnake King. You hear Clark tell the crowd about this incredible medicine he's discovered that can not only relieve muscle pain, but sprains, bruises, sore throats, frostbite, insect bites, and many more different ailments. People in the crowd are queuing up to buy his snake oil medicine. And so, desperate for some pain relief, you go and buy a bottle for yourself and take a drink. Welcome to the story of Clark Stanley, the original snake oil salesman. In the present day, the phrase snake oil salesman is often used to describe a scammer who knowingly sells fraudulent goods and tries to rip people off. In other words, a con man. And Clark Stanley is the man responsible for that. But here's the plot twist. Snake oil may have genuine medicinal properties. You see, snake oil was introduced to America by Chinese immigrants who were brought in to build the railroads. After a hard day of backbreaking labor, they would share their homegrown remedies with the other workers to help ease the pain in their aching joints. Because back in China, oil obtained from Chinese water snakes had been used in traditional medicine for centuries in order to treat joint ailments such as arthritis. And some modern day scientific studies have backed this up. Analysis of traditional snake oil showed that it contained a very high percentage of omega-3 fatty acids, which help reduce cholesterol, inflammation, blood pressure, and can improve cognitive functions. In fact, researchers in Japan found that mice fed with Chinese sea snake oil showed a significant improvement in their ability to learn mazes and swim. Now, don't get me wrong, snake oil is certainly not some miracle medicine that's gonna make a lot of difference. But the point is, snake oil didn't start out as some fake medicine to get people's money. It was simply passed around by people as something that was genuinely a little useful. So why is snake oil nowadays associated with shady scams? Well, here's the thing. Because some people did get benefits from this Chinese snake oil, word of it spread like wildfire among the American working class. And soon all over the country, there was huge demand for this Chinese snake oil. There was just one problem though. There obviously weren't any Chinese water snakes in America. And there was no way that Chinese immigrants could import enough oil from back home to meet the ever-growing demand in the US. And so, since demand for Chinese snake oil far outweighed the supply, this opened the floodgates for scammers to create their own version of snake oil, which of course, they claimed was just as good, if not better, than the real thing. And this is where we meet our story's intriguing protagonist, Clark Stanley. Clark Stanley, the self-proclaimed rattlesnake king, said that he came from Texas. Clark claimed that whilst working as a cowboy for over a decade, he'd spent a good chunk of the 1880s with the Hopi tribe in Arizona, and they liked him enough to entrust him with the secret knowledge of how to make their special snake oil medicine, which he then improved to turn it into the most potent snake oil on the market. It was a good story, but it was just a story. Nobody ever confirmed any of this, and there's absolutely zero evidence of it. What's more likely is that Clark had simply heard that there was high demand in America for this Chinese snake oil and thus created his own fake version using rattlesnakes instead, which were much more readily available in America, and then created a backstory to make it sound good. But despite having no medical evidence to back up his claims, Clark proudly told everyone he met that if you suffered from joint pain or countless other ailments, then a bottle of Clark Stanley's snake oil liniment was guaranteed to soothe you. Now, at first, Clark was just another stereotypical small-time shady salesman. He'd travel all over the United States, peddling his miracle cure, one bottle at a time, to the unsuspecting gullible masses. And whilst Clark was the first to truly capitalize on the snake oil craze, he certainly wasn't the first person to sell useless concoctions disguised as medicine. Before we get to the next part of the story, have you guys noticed an increase in scams lately? 
That's why today's sponsor is Aura, an all-in-one security tool. Firstly, Aura protects you from scammers and hackers by scanning the internet to find if criminals are selling your personal info. I saw firsthand how it even scrapes the dark web to find out what personal data of yours is out there. Aura also protects your device from viruses and malware, and it even has a VPN to help keep your data and browsing history private. For me personally, it's helped cut down on the amount of spam I get, as they automatically opt you out of data brokers listing your information. Plus, Aura has more features like their password manager and real-time fraud protection. So basically, with Aura, you don't have to pay for loads of different security apps. And if you sign up right now using my link below, Aura will give you a two-week free trial, and you'll be shocked at how much of your private info Aura finds exposed. So let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. Go to aura.com magnates to start your free trial, or just click the link in the description or scan this QR code. Then let's get back to the story. Before the creation of the United States Food and Drug Administration, there was no real regulation over the sale of medicine. Anyone could sell their product and claim it had whatever medicinal properties they wanted, without fear of interference from the government. As a result, many entrepreneurs with no morals began creating something called patent medicines. These were typically advertised as treating a wide range of pains and illnesses, but conveniently, they never actually revealed what all of the ingredients were. It was always a secret formula, which really just meant they could contain pretty much anything, and thus most of the time, they were just a random mix of ingredients with little to no medical benefit. Whilst the patent medicine industry began in England in the 17th century, by the 1800s, they were being imported to many other countries. And pretty soon, scammers in the US realized it would be much more profitable for them to just create their own tonics and elixirs instead of importing them. So yet more of these useless patent medicines popped up. In fact, if you've seen my video on the story of Coke, you'll know Coca-Cola actually started out as one of these patent medicines. However, with so many different patent medicines being created in the 1800s, the market became crowded, because all of them made massive claims about the many different ailments they could treat. And so it became harder for these scammers to make their products stand out. That's why all of the most successful patent medicine sellers, including Clark Stanley and his snake oil, had one thing in common. Their sales pitches were more of a theatrical performance. They'd enter a town, set up shop on the main street, gather a crowd of onlookers, and put on a show to attract an audience and entice people to buy their products. They'd make sure the whole thing was a spectacle, so it was essentially part carnival, part sales pitch. One of the most common tactics these patent medicine sellers used was to have fake plants in the crowds who vouched for the product from personal experience and strongly encouraged others to try it for themselves. Everyone else in the crowd just assumed they were genuine customers who loved the product, but really, they were planted actors getting a cut of the sales money. And then once the show was finished and they'd sold lots of the fake medicine, they'd travel from town to town repeating the same con in a new place. Now, there were many people who did this, but it's believed Clark Stanley carefully observed the tricks the most successful patent medicine sellers were using and then decided to create an attention-grabbing show of his own. It was at the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago that Clark Stanley got his first big opportunity. Back then, this was the largest public event in the history of the United States. States, and Clark set up his own little stand at the fair where he would fascinate the public by manufacturing his special formula right there in front of them. Of course, he already knew the golden rule, put on a show. So Clark had brought with him a big bag of snakes, and he would snatch one from the sack, cut it open right in front of his gawking audience, and plunge it into boiling water. He then skimmed the fat off the top, mixed it with his own secret concoction of ingredients, and made his snake oil right there and then in front of the crowd. It was an impressive show, and this over-the-top display of cutting the snakes right in front of the audience gathered a lot of attention. And thus, Clark's snake oil was immediately snapped up by the crowds who gathered to see his grisly performance. Whilst Clark's theatrics helped him get a lot of initial customers, the other big breakthrough for Clark came when he used some of the profits to open a factory in Beverly, Massachusetts to produce his snake oil in larger quantities. He began operating on a much grander scale than any of the other patent medicine sellers of the time, and this made his operation seem more authentic. By 1901, Clark had become the largest snake oil salesman in the country and had one of the most popular products on the market. And so, he opened an even bigger manufacturing 
manufacturing plants. In fact, his product had become so popular that Clark had to contend with knockoffs that purposely tried to imitate the look of his bottle. Clark warned everyone not to be taken in by such worthless imitations, sold by shady travelling salesmen and street vendors. The irony, of course, is that this is exactly how Clark himself started out. But as bizarre as it may seem, Clark had done such a good job of marketing his fake snake oil that people were now making fake versions of his product. But despite the imitators, life was good for Clark Stanley, and his business was booming. At least, it was as long as he didn't have to actually prove any of these claims he was making. At the start of the 20th century, the United States government finally decided it was time to crack down on all of these unchecked patent medicines. They passed the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906. This was designed to improve the quality of food and medications, as well as punish offenders who mislabeled their products or operated in unsanitary conditions. Although in reality, this act was mainly passed in response to public outrage over the appalling conditions found in Chicago's meatpacking industry, and so that was the government's first target. This meant that even though dodgy patent medicines were rampant in the United States, it wasn't the government's main priority, which allowed Clark even more time to keep selling his formula. It wasn't until a decade later that the recently formed FDA turned its attention to snake oil and the other patent medicines. Of course, it made perfect sense to start by testing the most popular product on the market, which was Clark Stanley's snake oil liniment. Now, it turns out that rattlesnake oil contains less than half the omega-3 that traditional Chinese water snake oil had. So despite Clark's boasts and promises that his snake oil was the best that money could buy, it was never even close to the genuine Chinese snake oil in terms of effectiveness. However, it gets much worse. When the FDA tested Clark's product in 1916, they found that there was not even any snake oil whatsoever in his medicine. It was mostly just mineral oil mixed with 1% beef fat, some chili peppers, and a dash of camphor and turpentine to give it a distinct aroma. So basically, any health benefits people felt from Clark's supposed miracle cure were likely the result of the placebo effect. Some may say the ingredients which Clark added to give it the distinctive smell actually did incidentally have some minor health benefits. But what is clear is that Clark's wild claims of everything his product could cure were not true at all. Now, if he'd been selling actual real Chinese snake oil, then he'd have still been wildly exaggerating the benefits, but at least he'd have been selling what he claimed. But the reality was, his product didn't even contain snake oil of any kind. And thus, what most people don't realise is that Clark Stanley wasn't convicted for selling snake oil, he was convicted for selling fake snake oil. In the end, the whole thing was a blatant outright scam, claiming one thing and selling another, and using showmanship and lies to fool his customers. And thus, that is how the term snake oil salesman was born, and of course, lives on long after Clark Stanley is gone. The worst part though? is that even though Clark had misled his customers for decades and made a fortune off his hopeful victims, he was only fined $20 for misbranding his product. He was charged with falsely and fraudulently representing it as a remedy for all pain, but even accounting for inflation, that's only a fine of about $550 in today's money. And thus, the Rattlesnake King evaded any severe repercussions for his actions and got to ride off into the sunset with his ill-gotten gains, thus literally and permanently giving snake oil salesmen a bad name. Now, Clark Stanley may have put on a good show to trick people, but he wasn't as impressive as these guys right here. This is my mini-series on some of the most infamous scammers and con artists, including the much crazier stories of the Ponzi scheme, the con man who sold the Eiffel Tower, and the guy who robbed an entire country. Some of these are truly insane, so just click on the playlist on screen now and take your pick. I'll see you there in a second. Cheers.